Hello, Dan Johnson here at AirVenture 2011. We're back down in the ultralight area, one of my favorite areas, and we're talking to the proprietor of one of my favorite airplanes from back when, but one I never got to fly. I'm ashamed to say. It was one I always wanted to fly, never did. Went away all this time, but it's back. Welcome back to uh, AirVenture. Thank you. Thank you. I, haven't, I haven't been here in 25 years. You haven't been here in 25 <laughs> years, and uh, I've missed you all 25. But you've got something pretty exciting this year, and we have not seen something quite like this in a while. We've seen some electrics, but not two electrics on a single airplane before. You know, there was a laser Air once that had four engines on oh, it, I yeah. recall. Had, had even Maybe eight. six or eight. I didn't <laughs> keep track of all of them. But here we got the electric laser, Air, which I'm told, and your sign says, is an original 28-year-old airplane. Correct. Still in the original covering, but I guess it's got some new... Uh, engine nacelles, if that's the word for an electric motor, I'm not sure. That's correct. What have you done here, Dale? Well, I took the uh, big, uh, heavy 18 horsepower motors off and... The heavy 18 horsepower that's motor. That's right. Huh? We, we, <laughs> like this. It, it, remember, oh, the original laser started... on this one. These had the JPX engines. Yeah, oh, we had JP, yeah. you were using yeah. JPX That's last? why okay. they're big. The, 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 as you know, they were, most lasers were sold with 9.5 horsepower Rotex or smaller. Right, right. So. So, the big, oh, so those were the big heavy duty right. stuff then, my, the heavy iron. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> Mine first had the little Pioneer chainsaw engines on them. Yeah. That, and you that, used that Solo really for a while too, didn't you? Or no, somebody we, did? I, uh, yeah, there was lasers with Solo, but we never sold them with Solos. And I we, see. we had tested them. But Some guys even put a little 28 on them uh, the, uh, right in the center to, to run them. So speaking of uh, having done this for a while and with some uh, success back then, more than a little bit, yeah. how many airplanes were ever flying under the brand Lazer? Uh, we sold about uh, 1,200 aircraft kits. 1,200 aircraft kits. Yeah. How many do you think I got in the year? Uh, a significant number, I can't say for sure, but I would say most, you know, almost all of them were flown in Probably the a thousand air. plus yeah. then, easily. Yeah, huh? absolutely. That's a pretty good success story anywhere in aviation. You don't hear numbers get above the four-digit mark very often. Yeah. And, and the other thing, Dan, is you talk about the safety record. I mean, this airplane could be flown with floats. With It was just unbelievable yeah. the amount of hours that you could put on one of these airplanes. Well, and you were also one of the leaders in using a material that uh, has kind of disappeared from view, both figuratively, <laughs> yeah, figuratively both and literally. This stuff's called Tedlar, I know. Correct. Tell us a little bit about it, and obviously... It looks like plastic sheet, and that wouldn't hold up for 28 years of no. being out in the elements and whatnot. No. Tell a little, tell us a little bit about the airplane first, then we'll go to where the action really is this week for you. That's the electric motor. Okay. Well, I always uh, uh, enjoyed our um, mylar covered lasers, but the, we never got the life out of the mylar film, and we investigated. And I always loved the clear, clear look of the laser. Right. So I w we investigated different materials and found that Tedlar uh, was the key and it was made by DuPont and we were able to put it on the airplane and, and it, uh, this has actually 28 years on this covering. Not um, not ever been recovered? Uh, maybe been a recovered. patch or two, I suppose. Patches on patches of... Because are, you can't patch this stuff reasonably yeah, well, easily. right? It's uh, held on with a, a very uh, high-tech high, uh, high -tech tapes and... Uh, the tapes are even original, and, and, and I took some off when I did the electric conversion, and it was on there harder than I ever imagined it could be. Is that right? So it really, really got a good good yeah. uh, bond to it then. Yeah. Excellent. Well, and the airframe itself, of course, we used to see it with wheels and so forth. It looked a little like, vaguely like an airplane that I love down in Florida called the Connie, uh -huh. which is also built around a single float that came off an airplane that had a little problem there was one float left the guy said hmm, I'll build an airplane around it <laughs> so this looks really cool to me but this is yeah. not just a float this is an amphib that's right and of course it's sitting on wheels here and flying off of wheels here at AirVenture 2011 so pretty neat what else have you modified to this particular thing not counting the engines anything no it's it's a, it's a stock airplane with these are fairly unique floats I don't think the manufacturer sold too many of these uh, this is a Spalding float. I Spalding float, yeah. But, uh, but I Michigan, was fortunate to get one of them. Actually, for uh, Florida. Was he out yeah, of Florida? Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's how long it's been for all of them. So. Yeah, as I recall, he was a laser owner that just decided he wanted to build a set of monohull floats for it. Uh, was going to sell one. So. It almost doesn't look like a long enough float, but uh, well, it's got it, how does it work in the water? It, it works pretty well. It, uh, I, I get off in about 700 feet or 10,000 This is with the electric feet. motors? With the electric motors, yeah. 700 feet. Yeah. 
No, about that's the length a, that's of a this. pretty short uh, water run for sure, any well, float plane. I, I got a 20 mile lake in front of me, so <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> You're not too hurt. Got, not in got, such a big hurry to get I, off, huh? I got off glassy water at 98 degree temperature at 755 high, 750 foot high elevation lake. I didn't think they let it get to 98 in Canada. Uh, no, it was, I'm in mid state New York. New York. Oh, okay. All right. That's fair. Because that <laughs> Finger lakes. Just, you don't allow those kind of temperatures up in Canada, I'm sure. Yeah. Anyway, all right, we're having a little fun with you here too, but let's talk about electric now, because the airplane is cool, and I've always loved it, and I think a lot of people here have, but clearly the interest has been, and you quietly whistling up into the air, and there's these little tiny props, it seems like these would make some real racket, but I heard it, it doesn't make a lot of racket. No, so tell me a little more, Start, start. let's start with the motor part, and we'll come back to the battery part. Okay, well the motor is what, what's really made this airplane just before Oshkosh, which really allowed me to put it on the floats. Um, it's, a, it's a motor made by the co company called Joby, J-O-B-Y in California, and they, uh, they just put it on the market a couple of months ago, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get a delivery of two just before, a couple of weeks before Oshkosh. And as soon as I put these motors on, I already had the system built up to run on a little smaller motor, and on electric motors, electric so motors. you plan electric I, on, yeah, your, on your on your redo June, all yeah. along. Okay. On June first, I flew with uh, two smaller motors for about forty minutes. Okay. And uh, and I wasn't happy with the, the heat dissipation in, in, of those motors and the getting the heat out of them. So uh, I was about to rewind them when I found out Joby was actually selling their engines, and not just talking about them because I had heard about them before. Okay. And I just ordered them instantly right then and there and waited five weeks. And what do they do? do they they don't, certainly don't make electric motors for airplanes because that's no market yet. What do they make them for principally? Well, they're, they're, the, the motors are a bit of an offshoot of some wind generation technology they're developing. Power generation from wind at high altitude down tethers. I see. And they also have an intention of making a vertical takeoff manned aircraft with eight of these engines. Is that right? So, so when it's electric, not in yeah. use as an airplane, you let the wind blow on it and you make electricity? I'm just they, they Actually, that's one of my goals. Uh, <laughs> is that right? Next, next I thought year, surely I was being facetious, but really. No, no. I, I, what I'll do is uh, when I'm going up in a thermal, uh, I'll put the controller in regeneration mode. I was going to say, that's regenerative and, technology. And, then, and huh? just uh, extract some energy out of the thermal as I'm climbing, so maybe I, I don't climb at a thousand feet a minute, I'll climb at 500 feet a minute and put that energy back into the batteries. <laughs> That's what I want. I've been wanting to do that for 30 years. Is so, that right? Yeah. You had this idea about electric motors even when you were still building and selling sure, the gasoline sure, powered laser? Sure. There's, there's uh, electric, electric motors have always been a dream of a lot of aircraft designers. Agree that the well, ultralight, the true ultralight, the American ultralight, the 254 pound empty weight machine is the perfect place to experiment with electric technology. Absolutely, there's uh, the, the, it's wide open as to what you can do with it, and uh, and and the laser air in particular is very efficient, so that it doesn't take a lot of power to keep it in the air. If you look at this whole package here, and you envisioned electric motors on it. Was there a change in how you had to go about stuff from gasoline to electric, or did you just sort of take well, one off and put the other one on? Well, no, I've been I've been trying to put electric on and lays there for the last 10 years or so. I've had three or four attempts at it. I've always been stymied by some technical thing and everything went on the R&D pile. But uh, this got time... a pretty good pile out back now, do you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I started in February um, for, with a blank sheet of paper and, and took the current technology of stuff I saw in the industry in the model airplane industry because I'm a, I also fly ready control model ah, airplanes. Ah, okay. And they went through a big transition, didn't they, from gasoline, 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 oh, electric. Yeah. And all of a sudden, everything. It's electric. all electric now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So and I guess they're the true development category. We're yeah, the first man carrying one. Most of the t technology behind the motor is is uh, model airplane industry stuff. The, the, is that right? The, my, I'm not, to fit in the ultralight part 103 class, um, you you have a maximum limitation of five gallons of fuel and fuel is a uh, not defined by the FAA so I looked up a, go obviously to Wikipedia and they say uh, fuel is any material that re can release energy so um, <laughs> uh, the, the fuel that I can find on my plane is are, are these lithium polymer cells um, and I decided then I thought about it more and 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 uh, said well 
gee, a gallon is not a measurement of weight, it's a measurement of volume. We do weight only because weight's important to airplanes and yeah. we recalculate from volume right. to weight, but, but gasoline expressed as a quantity is expressed in volume. That's right, so the FAA defined it as volume. So then I, just, I thought, well, I guess I gotta have all my, I gotta be able to put all my uh, lipo cells into a five gallon can. So that's what determined how many cells Literally? I have. I, I, I got the volume of all of these cells will fit in a five gallon can. So you got them all down in that little opening? Well, I'm just kidding. Again. Yeah. But uh, so, so I can take my 95 pounds of batteries out of the airplane and then weigh it for my empty weight. And what do you think FAA is going to do with that information now? You, I, I don't know. You've I, I the hope the agency a little I, bit of a curve here. I, so. I, I hope I've given them given them a way to um, justify uh, uh, promoting uh, green aviation. With I hope the batteries. so. Now, and you obviously had them out at one point. Did you weigh yeah. the aircraft then, per chance? Uh, uh, but I, uh, I weighed the aircraft without the floats. Okay. And that's 200 pounds. Oh. And the float system? The floats at about 70, uh, 70 pounds, maybe. Okay, so you're about 270, 270 and, without batteries. Yeah, and, and that means I only need a 15-pound float allowance. Yeah, because you're allowed uh, 304 pounds yeah. with floats in the in yeah, the So I'm, I'm way under. Okay, so the flying of the airplane. Okay, I, I accept that the technology works. I assume all this, by the way, is just fairing. That there's not really very much. There stuff is a. In. Uh, there is the motor controller. Ah, right the here. controllers. You got to have the controllers. Yeah. Okay. Show me. Uh, show me how you know how much juice you got left. I am my little. The only instrument on the aircraft. <laughs> I have two little displays that show me RPM, volts, and motor temperature. They kind of look like sunglasses on there, staring yeah, back yeah. at you. But yeah. so that's and they're telling you total voltage left in the batteries. Yeah. And you go from what to what? Well, from full to empty. Full, it starts out about 63 volts. And at 53 volts, I want to be on the ground. 63 okay. okay. volts, uh, time to go fly. How you got long about, you got? With the floats, it's a, you got about 45 minutes. But if it, if it was a wheeled laser air with no floats, you got about an hour and 15 minutes. An hour and 15. With this, yeah. these, I mean, these don't look very big to me. Their physical volume is not very big. Five gallons. <laughs> That's right. I think we just talked about that. So. But I mean, they're just there's just not that much there. We're used to seeing car batteries or go kart batteries or I, I mean uh, golf club batteries. And, geez. Okay. If you, if you set these beside a set of car batteries that had the same energy on them, you'd have one of these and 14 of the same size car batteries. Is it's that right? Now there's one. Right. And you're talking about so if I had a lipo that had the, was the same size as a lead acid. You would need 14 lead acids to equal that light. Wow, okay, that's pretty dramatic. So obviously these are very efficient batteries, but Mark Byerly indicated to us that uh, he thinks the battery technology is developing very quickly. Would you agree with that sentiment? Absolutely, but I've already bought my 300 hours of flying. <laughs> and, and, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm, when these when this one these batteries are uh, run out at 300 hours, I'm gonna put the next generation in. And so I'm showing hours, you that you can do it now, and it's practical. And 300 hours of flying cost what in batteries alone? Uh, about $3,300. So that's about $11 an hour for your prepaid gasoline. Okay, and we did some math earlier, and that actually calculates out quite well to the cost of fuel. Less than fuel. That's absolutely. I can fly this on electric um, for the less than I can. Uh, fly it on a fuel then a gas engine airplane and no matter which way you look at it it's so out there we, that have lasers 12 1300 of them and they wanted to update to this technology what type of dollars and cents are they looking at well uh, I urge them first to go out and see how much it costs to replace the the, the gas engines they have on it right now Good point. and they'll be they'll be uh, a little bit shocked but uh, it actually ends up being a lot less money to get rid of your old engines and put electric on it than it would be to replace them with new engines. Is that right? And so, okay, well, so what is that net cost to, you got a, you got a lazy air, you got no engines on it at all, but it's otherwise completely airworthy and ready for this installation, what would they spend? Okay, well, we got uh, the engine uh, prop and motor controller here. That'll be about $2,000. Um, and, and then you have the... Um, chargers which we already talked about which you can either go for the $300 nine-hour charge or the 
you know, two thousand dollar uh, one hour and fifteen minute charge, and then and then you have to uh, buy your prepaid uh, fuel uh, in terms of what I mean is the batteries. Sure, sure, understood. And the batteries uh, that yeah, I have in here. Yeah, you're not taking money out to pay for gas afterwards. That's so right. You're it's, just it's paying a, it up front. It's just like having a five hundred gallon. Uh, fuel tank in your backyard you have to fill up <laughs> right and then use it over two years right <laughs> and that's thirty three hundred dollars to, to, to buy those uh, okay batteries. so what did we get there we had two thousand and thirty three hundred but that doesn't include props and maybe yeah, some metal no, this is two thousand dollars for everything in the oh, nacelle okay that includes yeah. the controller as well huh? yeah okay yeah, yeah. so that's about fifty five hundred dollars yeah and then uh uh and plus a charger then there's some smaller components for maybe <laughs> another five hundred dollars or so well, you're still uh, under seven, though. Yeah, yeah. Well That's under correct. seven. Yeah. And the cost of a couple engines to replace what you did have, but which are now gone, and you got to do it all again. Well, I, I heard that they were the, the, the two nine and a half horse, but the nine and a half horsepower Rotexes were, were up around four thousand dollars. Well, wow, okay. Forty six hundred dollars was the last. Forty six hundred dollars. Right, go. and then you got to go buy your fuel. Times two. Times two. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Times two. Yeah. And then you got to go buy your fuel, and which you still you've have to modify bought. those that's, engines. That's correct. Oh yeah, you got to do a lot of work to put those engines on this aircraft. Okay. So considerably lower cost for a lazy air owner that has a worthy airframe, not assuming he has to do anything to the airframe to make it yeah. so. And he's back in the air for about another seven grand or thereabouts. That's Plus, right. he's prepaid 300 hours of flying. That's right. Although you do have to still pay a dollar per hour to charge it oh. from the electric grid. Gosh, but that's, that's still not too much. Yeah, it's three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars <laughs> over what? Four or five years Whatever of flying. Do, I mean, that's yeah. uh, that doesn't seem too tough. Yeah. Okay, so so I'm convinced. I'm a laser owner, and I'm convinced. And I say, Dale, what? What? Okay, what do I have to do now? Uh, will you sell me this thing as a package? Well, I don't want to be in any kind of uh, airplane business anymore. Okay. I've done that, but I, I'm here to show people that it can be done. I'm here to allow anybody to copy what I've done. And how do we uh, I do have that? A, I have a I have a uh, forum thread on uh, rcgroups.com where that has chronicled this whole build log from February to now and and people can ask questions there I, I, I've, I've, I've said I, 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 all of the components I've, are, I've used are listed on there so and uh, where you get them and any, all that stuff you still need to be a bit of a doer yourself or to, to, to do this and uh, but you can do it. Subscribe to the Light Sports and Ultra Light Flyer web video magazine with hundreds and hundreds of videos now online, including air show coverage, Rotax engine tech tips, Rotax 377, 447, 503, 532, and 582 engine rebuilding videos, each two hours in length, propeller maintenance, advisors, and repairs, VRS parachute saves, Bing carb updates, and much, much more. Get a yearly subscription at www.ultralightflyer.com.